Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now in the previous one we took a look at what the Radeon 8060S, the newest most powerful iGPU, was capable of in a handful of titles as part of a Minis Forum mini PC. Now I was actually really impressed with the graphics and judging by the comments a lot of you were too but I couldn't help but wonder how the 8060S compared to a desktop alternative and this is something I mentioned in the original video. Today we're going to be comparing it to this, the desktop RTX 4060. Now it may make more sense to compare it to a laptop GPU and that's probably something we'll get onto. This is sort of a snippet of a larger project I'm working on. I'm comparing a few graphics cards and a few laptop GPUs as well but I wanted to share my findings of the 8060S in comparison to the 4060 now because there are a couple of surprises in here and initially I didn't know what to expect but we'll get into the results just uh, momentarily. I want to talk about the hardware I'm using to test first of all. So of course we have the MS S1 Max from Minis Forum. This has a Ryzen AI Max plus 395, 16 cores, 32 threads, 128 gigs of RAM. It's a pretty insane system uh, to be honest but it is a rather expensive one and I wouldn't recommend buying one exclusively for gaming but as I said before it is impressive where we're at in terms of iGPUs these days. Now with the 4060 for comparison I'm actually using an i9-14900K system it's the best CPU I currently have and I'm using 64 gigs of 6400 megahertz DDR5 so it doesn't quite match the 8000 megahertz LPDDR5X inside the Minis Forum machine but it's as close as I could get really and in terms of real world usage it's probably quite unrealistic. I don't think you'll be buying an i9 if you plan to use a 4060, you know, unless you do some pretty CPU intensive stuff, video editing, it might be exactly what you need. But the 4060, it's 115 watts. Um, the 8060S as part of the Minis Forum system uses 130 watts under performance mode and that's what I tested the system with. Didn't really make any other changes apart from the dedicated VRAM for the 8060S. I set to 8 gigs to match the 4060 desktop GPU. So the comparative systems are quite different, but in both situations, the graphics will be the bottleneck. So both GPUs are reaching their maximum potential, and hopefully that adds some fairness back into this video. But let's see what the graphics as part of both systems are capable of and see how they compare in a handful of titles. We'll expand more on this soon, but let's get into these initial results. So the gameplay you're seeing on screen today is from the 8060S exclusively, and I've just thrown up a few comparative results on screen for the 4060 desktop GPU, but we will have a few side-by-side -side gameplay clips in another video, and hopefully I'll feature more graphics cards then as well. So we'll be starting off with Cyberpunk 2077 at 1080p with the high preset. We also have high textures and crowds enabled. The 8060S delivered 70 frames per second with a 1% lower 50 and a 0.1% lower 40. This is with performance mode enabled, so we're using about 130 watts according to the MSI and Riva Tuner on screen overlay here. Pretty decent performance considering we don't have a dedicated graphics card in this system, and you may want to enable uh, FSR to give it a little bit of a helping hand just to bump up those percentile lows, but overall it's a pretty respectable experience. Now when we compare this to the desktop 4060, yeah it pulls way ahead, we're looking at 95 frames per second, so 25 FPS more here, a 1% low of 72 and a 0.1% low of 56. Now at first I was thinking well that's it, that's the 8060S completely done for now. Let's move on to Borderlands 4 though. Now this is quite difficult to run on uh, lower end or entry level GPUs, even modern ones like the 4060, and you're going to be pretty limited in terms of settings. With the 8060S here, I stuck with the lowest settings uh, with TSR native, and we're getting pretty close to 60 FPS. Now behind the scenes of this video, I was trying to keep the benchmark runs as accurate as possible, so I was doing exactly the same thing with one system and then the other as well, whether it was just a run through a certain environment or circling a certain map. Yeah, just things like that, trying to keep it as close as possible for accuracy here. There will be slight variations, I guess, but this still gives us a good idea of how these two systems compare. 56 FPS then for the 8060S, a 48 
FPS 1% lower and a point 1% lower 37. So not too bad and pretty consistent, pretty impressive here. When we actually look at the 4060 results up on screen, this actually did a little worse in terms of the average. That's right, the 8060S iGPU has overtaken the 4060 in this gaming result. Now the percentile lows were actually a little better for the 8060S as well. 48 and 37 compared to 42 and 29. A few more dips and drops with the RTX card, which was surprising. I was expecting the 4060 to pull things back a bit when it came to the consistency and percentile lows. Moving on to GTA 5 Enhanced now, we have the very high RT preset, so this gives us a little taste of how ray tracing results compare. With the 8060S, we're seeing 81 FPS, a 1% low of 65 and a 0.1% low of 58. So again, pretty impressive, especially with the ray tracing options, including ray trace glo global illumination switched on as well. This is the setting that's going to make the biggest difference in terms of visual upgrades with the Enhanced Edition, in my opinion. Now, 81 FPS, pretty solid for an iGPU. When we throw up the 4060 results for a comparison, we're looking at 117, sorry, 118 frames per second and percentile lows of 97 and 89. So the 0.1% low with the 4060 was actually better than the average on the 8060S. Let's move on to Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 because this was another close result that actually swung back in favour of the 8060S onboard graphics. Not to spoil things, I think I just have actually, but yeah, 92 FPS here with the high preset and SMAA2 TX enabled, a 1% low of 66 and a 0.1% low of 46. So it's let down a little bit by the dips and drops in the percentile low um, categories here, but overall pretty consistent, not too bad at all. No complaints from me really in terms of overall performance. This actually outpaced the 4060 by a few frames per second compared to 92 with the 8060S. We were seeing 88 with the 4060. Still a decent result, of course. Um, where the 4060 really sort of shone, though, pulled ahead was with the percentile numbers, 77 and 74. So we're looking at more consistency here as opposed to the 66 and 46 that we saw with the 8060S as part of the Ryzen 395 Plus Max CPU. Red Dead Redemption 2 hits 78 frames per second with a mix of ultra and high. I think I had the textures, yeah, I had the texture set to ultra and everything else set to high here. TAA was also set to high. The geometry LOD was maxed and the grass LOD or level of detail was set to 2 out of 10. For at least 60 FPS almost consistently, 78, 1% low of 65 and a 0.1% low of 55. With the 4060, however, 100 FPS exactly here on the dot, a 1% low of 80 and a 0.1% low of 77. So again, the 0.1% low for the 4060 was almost as good as the average for the 8060S, but very impressive for the 8060S iGPU once again, but can't quite match the 4060 in this case. We'll finalise with what is shaping up to be one of my favourites of the year, the Outer World 2 on the 8060S, 69 frames per second with the medium preset and TSR native, very nice indeed. The 1% low was 54 and the 0.1% low of 47. As I said before, I did more accurate benchmark runs behind the scenes. The gameplay you're seeing is mainly for just illustrative purposes only, just running around making things a bit more exciting than just running straight through a level, for example. But yeah, pretty decent here and fairly consistent percentile lows too. In comparison then to the 4060, well, this hit 63 frames per second, so still a plus 60 FPS average, but it fell short of about five, six frames per second in comparison to the 8060S. We saw a 1% low of 45 compared to 54 beforehand and a 0.1% low of 39 compared to 47 beforehand as well. So the 8060S actually pulled ahead here. It's worth bearing in mind though that the Minus Forum system costs a lot more than say, and i7 and 4060 machine will but it's interesting to see that we're at a point where integrated graphics can match a sort of mainstream or entry level modern graphics cards maybe not in terms of ray tracing and it would be nice to see uh, more powerful igpus as part of cheaper processors but i think we're getting there and this has made for a pretty interesting test in my opinion but let me know your thoughts down below. I'll have a wider range of tests coming soon with this system and I'd like to try a Steam on it as well. 
um, set it up as a little sort of living room gaming machine. Thanks for watching, as always, and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.